Craig and Tiny Orchard have survived a terrible bushfire to pursue their dream of a lifestyle most think died with the pioneers. A dream that they will give Mountain Brumby's sanctuary in a wild valley tucked in the rugged Australian high country. Now they have to face the hard realities of making that dream come true. To Craig and Tani, the valley where they will live and create a wild horse sanctuary is perfection. Bush and open grassland, fresh water, isolation, abundant wildlife, and it has a perfect building site. No matter that they won't have electricity supply, shops, or neighbors. In winter, snow makes travel treacherous. In summer, they will share the valley with some of the world's most deadly snakes. They design their bush hut by pegging out a floor plan. Neither have building experience, but they won't let that get in the way. They are determined they and mobs of Brumbies will be living in the valley within a year. The kitchen. Yeah, we've got to have it. Have and the, the lamp. So the morning have sun comes table in. Table there, so the sun comes in. Yeah. So that you're sitting there looking out the window at the sun. Yeah. Have the horse paddock there. Walk out, catch a bumby. Horse paddock there. Catch a fish. Sit on the veranda, drink a can. What's the best thing we can do? Catch a fish Build for breakfast. A snowman. <laughs> <laughs> They set a budget for materials. It's modest, but beyond their current reach. Getting married wiped out their savings. Craig takes whatever farm work he can get. There are still hundreds of kilometers of burnt fence line to replace after summer's devastating fires. Valuable cattle wander off into the bush. Craig is hired to retrieve them. Cattle get feisty when feral. It can take days to get them back to pasture. It's lonely work for a man who should be on his honeymoon. Meanwhile, in Banambra, the closest town to the valley, Tani is earning wages at the general store. Craig cuts down dead trees before they fall down. With winter rapidly approaching, there is a demand for firewood. Brumby running can make a reasonable return, and Craig would rather be Brumby running than crutching sheep. The problem is, it takes time to break in a Brumby to be sold. They need cash now to begin work in the valley before winter is upon them. There will be fences to build or repair before the wild brumbies can be released into the sanctuary and, of course, the hut to build. 
They underestimate just how much it will cost and how long it should take. Impatient to get started, as soon as they have a little cash in the bank, Craig and Tani head off to the nearest town with a hardware store. Thanks. Credit, savings. Check. Right Since that fire has just skyrocketed, I can't believe it. Lost so much, but you've got to reply so much too. You don't realise how much it costs. Mm. Nearly double on the price of my fence, so it's trouble. Anyway. Have to sell some more Brumbies. Yeah, have to. Winter is the best time to track brumbies. They leave hoof prints in fresh snow. Captured horses will be broken in and can be auctioned in summer to pay off debts, but that does not assist their immediate cash flow problems. In the meantime, they will have to do their best with what resources they can muster. whatever they can find or buy cheap second hand, only paying full price when there is no other way. Despite the pressure, they take a day out to celebrate an occasion that cannot be ignored. It is Tani's birthday, and this will be her first ever birthday party. Because the joining of the cake. Yep. Oh, I might need that big box to make like a bottom bit. Yep. Box yep. We just had a balloon pop. So it's going to be like this, and like this, and then like that. Don't touch the cans. That she has reached 24 is especially worth celebrating. In fact, Tani's family and Craig think it is a miracle. She had, um, gosh, what do you call it? Bloody sheep get it. High data. Yeah, she had high data pretty bad. When she had just turned 18, Tani suffered pains in her stomach and chest. <laughs> Doctors discovered her body was being attacked by the rare parasitic disease, Hydatid. It can cause blindness, severe debilitation, 
or kill. It's rather creepy. It's like a bug. I know it cost me 17, 17 grand at the time for the old woman to stay in hospital down in Melbourne and it cost nothing for Tony. She nearly died. <laughs> yeah. Absolutely dreadful because with the drugs they treated her with, Tani had a very painful time and she was very sick. She isn't a big person at the best of times but she was uh, about 48 kilo and well, <laughs> I shouldn't say it but we almost lost her a couple of times because her body just shut down. <laughs> Surgeons saved Tani's life by removing part of one lung and half of her liver. Where did I cut? I'll cut the middle. Here? here? We don't want to cut that pretty girl, do we? <laughs> here we go. There is no guarantee the hydatid have completely gone from her body. It's clean. Tani must have regular medical checkups. birthday party and coming out to the bush which is good out here and, and it's wet and cold and rainy <laughs> <laughs> and um, hopefully we'll have another party next year thank you very much enjoy yourselves and yeah <laughs> have yeah. some cake it's really nice I made it <laughs> When family and friends learn that Craig and Tani are in need of building materials, all sorts of useful things are offered. A decaying farmhouse still has salvageable roofing iron. Although the building is near collapse, the lining boards should scrub up well. Great care is required in their removal. Venomous tiger snakes consider the walls of abandoned houses a pleasant place to curl up for winter. One. <laughs> Tani's parents give them a small stand of trees scorched by the fires to cut into stumps and frames for the hut. There are no formal building plans, but Craig knows exactly what he needs. The hut will be supported by stout stumps, each 17 of Craig's steps long. There is good timber beneath the blackened bark. Being resourceful takes much longer than buying supplies. The deadline Craig and Tani have set for living in the hut and having horses in the sanctuary within a year of their wedding is beginning to look unachievable. To make matters worse, the old tractor Craig is relying on to put in the stumps breaks a vital part. The tractor's broken down, that's going to cost me, cost me three days. Already nearly a week behind. This rain is just not helping whatsoever. It's meant to snow tonight and the next day. As soon as it snows, I'm going to have to go catching brumbies. I can't afford not to lose the snow. So at the moment, it's just a uh, bloody week behind. Craig and Tunney start work early. They have the use of the friend's tractor just for today. For stability, they must bury each stump a third of its length.
further down. Don't walk under it. Here, come and give me a bunk up. Stand there. What? <laughs> give me a bunk up with your hands. No, put your hands under my boot. <laughs> right under. Right under. Right. Right. <laughs> you gotta hold it like this. Because I've got to put the crowbar in there. <laughs> <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Let go. Yeah. It's gonna fall. Yeah. Come out of here. Yeah. Hold it like I'm holding it like that. Just push against it. No, you're pulling it too. Just hold it. Okay. <laughs> you're gonna let it go, aren't you? I'm not. <laughs> Trust me. Don't get in between that and the tractor. You'll be squashed. The flat sides must be positioned to the inside edges of the hut's corners. Don't put your hand there if it goes against it. It is vital they get the positioning right. If they don't, the hut will be hopelessly askew. Let's hold it there for a sec. <coughs> As the day goes on, they get the hang of it. Now we'll turn him. I'll get him over here a bit. A bit more. Uh, it might do. I think it's got to be on a flat edge. Yeah, that's better. Just keep going, you've got to go right around this flat, touches the side. Towards us. Keep going. Let's put a little bit more in. Do it? Yep. Do you want to get that level? There we go. At the end of a very long day, they have the stumps placed and they have the satisfaction of knowing they made a pretty good job of stage one of construction. The snow on the mountain tops is a metre thick. Perfect conditions for the task at hand. Friend Jason will work with Craig and Tani to track down the Brumbies. All three are registered Brumby runners, permitted to capture the wild horses to keep their numbers within sustainability in the national parks.
Young colts and foals tire quickly. The older and wilier brumbies don't give up so easily. They are cunning enough to head for the trees. Craig has been catching brumbies since he turned 14. He is wise to their tricks. Young Brumbies quieten quickly. They are used to doing what they are told. The stallions tolerate no nonsense. The older Brumbies need more encouragement. Craig blindfolds the foal. Ah, wait. It stops him from shying at the horse trailer. On your own business, Jack. Jack. Don't want to keep him. Jack. He will ride back next to Craig's horse. See now. The steady rhythm of the older horse's heart rate will keep the foal calm. Oh boy. In the next episode, Craig breaks in a young Brumby. Yeah, it's not gonna hurt you, is it? and has an accident that threatens to make their deadline an impossibility. Damn me. The doctor said I've got to go and have a bloody operation. <laughs>